It's been three days since we poured our slab. We're getting ready to take these frames off. We're gonna take a look and see what the honeycombing looks like. I've been looking under the supports that hold it up. It never bowed, not one time. And I was really surprised that when we poured that heavy wet concrete on that, uh, that Duroc board, that it may start to sag a little bit, but it never did. It held pretty strong. And uh, I'll show you in just a second. ready for this tour come on got some honeycombing on this side no big deal now the good thing is we plan to cover the entire exterior with something else so we're not really concerned about any uh, any ugliness showing we just wanted to know that we did a good job now it looks like our boards had pulled away here and we've got some concrete that had went over the edge so we might have a little bit of touch-up work here to do. Try to get that concrete off of there and get it smooth. We're going to do stucco up over this. We're going to build a metal structure to cover the dome. And then we're going to stucco right on up. So it's one continuous uh, uh, structure. So I think we can work with that. Looks pretty good. Now let me show you the supports underneath. All right. There's some gap right there at that lintel. Um, I don't really like that, but that is rebarred in also, so that's not going to go anywhere. But in order to see that, you really have to get down here to look at it. And uh, all those structure pieces, I haven't determined if I'm going to go ahead and take that out now, or we're just going to remove it all at one time. But that, uh, that support there for that lintel, that's been in place for over two weeks. That concrete, that's good enough uh, strength that that'll hold. So, looking under there, looks good, huh? All those boards are kicked off at an angle so that uh, I can get those out really easy. But yeah, looks good. All right, we're moving on. I did this for the uh, pattern. I took a piece of scrap board, measured 21 inches, put a screw in one end, measured 21 inches, and took a drill bit same size as my pencil and drilled a hole in the board <clears throat> now the tip of this screw is just long enough to where it touches the concrete not right now buddy so that it doesn't <clears throat> go into the concrete just kind of anchors itself on the concrete stay down i drew 21 inches I guess turnip seed this is going to be part of the, the video today. And I just kind of drag the pencil along at 21 inches. She wants some attention. Not right now. I'm trying to make a video. Stay down. Now this is just going to give me a rough pattern that whenever I'm laying out for the insulation uh, layer, I'm looking at doing an uh, inch and a half to two inch insulation la layer of uh, vermiculite and concrete. And that's supposed to insulate, keep the heat from going down into my slab and losing it out of the oven. So it performs two, uh, two functions, protecting the concrete and retaining heat into the oven. All right, that's my basic template. 42 inch um, pizza oven here. 
and we're going to move on and start forming up for the uh, the vermicrete. All right, now, since the last video, we've made some progress. We've let the concrete harden. It's been about 10 days since you last seen us pour this concrete slab. And today I've been busy cutting my fire bricks in half. Like I said, these are the fire bricks that we got from an old uh, brick kiln that I got um, at a good deal. So we're gonna use these to build our dome. I've went ahead and put them in half um i started out with a 42 inch circle i found center i measured across all four ways found center came over 21 inches drew my circle and then i have lined my cut bricks up on the circle and then as i'm coming here to the front i have cut these uh bricks at an angle that will lay against my bricks here but then square off the front of my entryway my entryway is going to be 18 inches wide. My outer entryway is going to be 20 inches. That's so that I can have a one inch lip whenever I put a door up there that it will seal against the, uh, the face of the inner bricks that I have here. Go ahead and put this back in place. We're just getting ready to start uh, pouring our vermiculite concrete insulation uh, form on the bottom. I don't expect to do a lot of uh, bread baking and stuff like this but I'm gonna give it a little bit of insulation to help protect this concrete hearth I've measured um, <clears throat> took the old flashing and I have measured uh, inch and a half on the flashing flashing I took my 10 snips and uh, cut that out laid that in there and that's what we're gonna pour this insulation concrete up to the ratio is five parts vermiculite one part Portland cement we're going to mix that up, get a little bit wet. We're going to start pouring this in here. Now you see that we have this piece of marble already on top. What I want to do is I want to line this up where this is going to be. Um, and then I'm going to pour right up to that. So I have a little piece of uh, metal laying against that. So we get that, that poured, we can pull that metal out of there and we'll have a form. Now the reason that I didn't set my bricks on top of my vermiculite concrete is some of these bricks are questionable and if I have one break or chip out and I want to replace it, I don't want the outer dome sitting on top of my bricks. I want to be able to go in there and pull that brick out, replace it whenever, uh, whenever need be. I don't really trust the qualities, these quality of these bricks. So that's the way we're going to do it. Insulation concrete in the middle, bricks on the outside going up and over. All right, let's get busy, start mixing up our vermiculite and, and Portland cement. All right, so we've got our one Portland cement. And we're gonna put that in this mixer. We're gonna mix this dry right now. And then we're gonna use five vermiculite. Let's pull our bag a little closer so we don't have to walk. one vermiculite. Two vermiculite. Three vermiculite. Four vermiculite. Five vermiculite. Ah, ah, ah.
All right, our insulation layer is cured. It's been a few days since we've poured this. It's had time to set up. <clears throat> the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start laying out a herringbone pattern of our fire brick on top. Then we're gonna mark the circle and we're gonna start cutting the bricks to fit on top. Now, we have decided that we're gonna use sailors to go around the outside parameter that our dome is gonna be supported on. And then our bricks will lay in a herringbone pattern on our insulation hearth from there. So our dome is actually gonna start and go up from here. The reason we're doing this is because all these bricks, uh, they're older bricks, so they have some little chips. And if one of them cracks and breaks and it needs to be replaced, I wanna be able to pull that brick out of there or that portion of a brick and pull it out of there and replace that brick as needed. So I don't want anything that's permanent. That's why I don't want our soldiers to start on top of the brick. I wanna be able to pull it out and change it out when I need to. So that's the plan we're gonna go with. Now the way we start our herringbone pattern is we gotta find center. So I take our tape measure and we are 70 and an eighth inch. So 70 inches and an eighth. So I'm gonna come back to 35 and a 16th, draw a line on my concrete and I, I mark that. I'm gonna do that for the front and I've done that for the, for the, uh, the front of the insulation layer and I found center up there. Now I'll just take a string and I'm gonna pull a straight line. And then I'm gonna just lay that straight line right on top of my mark. Just pull it tight so that it doesn't move. So that it doesn't easily move. And then we're gonna hold that one down there with a brick also. Now we'll start laying out a herringbone pattern. So if you take a framing square that has a 45 degree angle, we lay that on the string. Hey, turnip seed. No, I can't do a video with you jumping up there, so stay down. But she's not. All right, so we take our brick and you want this point to end right on this string. So we're gonna come over the string, lay this point of the brick, the string right on that point right there. And then we're gonna lay out lay it to a 45 degree all right 45 degree pattern Take another brick, come to the top. And we take another brick. Now the edge of this brick should also be right on that string. The corner of this brick is gonna also go on that string and we just alternate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay these bricks out. Once I get all full and I have it supported, I'm gonna take a pencil and I will go along the outside of my insulation layer and draw a line. And then I'm gonna take that brick over to the saw and we're gonna cut that saw. Once we get all of our bricks cut to our layout, we're gonna pull them all off in order. We're gonna lay down a thin layer of a sandy and fire clay mixture and then we're going to get the bricks perfectly flat and then we're going to start 
building our brake dome on top of that. So that's what you're gonna see. We got a little bit of filling in to do along the edges, the little pieces, but I'm gonna have some cutoffs. So as I cut these off, I can fit the leftover pieces into those little spots all the way around. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, all right, finish. One doing. day at a time, I've been going around cutting one brick here and there, and I haven't taken time to just sit down and cut all the bricks at one time. But I wanted to show you the technique that I use to get the pattern of the, uh, of the layout. So as I lay my bricks up here, I cut off about an inch of the end of a pencil and I go just underneath the edge and I just kind of mark where that is. And then on this side, just kind of mark where that is. And then right down the side here. And then where those two marks were, I just connect the two with a slight, slight arch. I can't do anything with this cat. I'm gonna have to lock you up. And so I got a little bit of an arch right there connecting the two lines. Now I'll take this over to my saw and then we just cut from the shortest end just straight across. And then I come back and I just lightly trim along that arch. Now when I'm over there on the saw and it's spitting out water onto the blade, it's gonna wash this pencil away. So make sure you're paying attention so you don't lose track of where your marks are. got next is I've got to do the arch so we've already got bricks cut for the archway and then we got to start building out the dome and then I've got to cement or a mortar into place those uh, sailor br uh, bricks that I have there and uh, so you're gonna get to see us laying out the dome and incorporating the archway in the next build so stay tuned I hope you enjoyed this little uh, video don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching Thank you.